Welcome to southwestern Idaho near the city of Boise, the capital of Idaho, and another edition of Random Road Cuts. And lest we think that all road cuts involve solid rocks, I thought we'd take a look at this road cut here along Highway 21, which does not cut through solid rocks, but actually cuts through some sediments and see what kind of uh, features we can see and what information we can glean by looking at this cut through uh, unconsolidated material. So thanks again for joining me on this edition of Random Road Cuts. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Random Road Cuts is a series where we stop, investigate a road cut randomly, um, make observations together, and see what we can glean about the geologic history of that particular location by just taking a look at the rocks and seeing what we can figure out together. So thanks again for joining me. So we're here uh, right along the Boise River. It's uh, probably when I climb up in the embankment here, we'll be able to look down on the Boise River, but this small canyon is incised by the Boise River. Um, looking across, we have these dark volcanic rocks, these basalts that line the south rim of the Boise River or the Boise River Canyon right here. Uh, upstream is a reservoir, Lucky Peak, uh, up this way to the east. Uh, and then this river flows right through the heart of Boise and past the university. But let's go ahead and head up here, up this embankment and see what we can see. Looking at it from a distance, we can see there's some different uh, colors and textures in the rocks here there's definitely some layering in here and we're going to mainly investigate the, the sedimentary units here in the road cut way up there at the tippy top is more of the dark volcanic rocks um, but let's just investigate this road cut here together so let's go ahead and head uh, up the slope right away we're seeing a lot of rounded cobbles gravels of different sizes and compositions this could be some interesting walking getting up here, like walking on bowling balls. And presumably, I mean, we can add a little interpretation here, but we're right next to a fairly substantial river, the Boise River, which drains from the central mountains of Idaho, the backside of the Sawtooth Mountains. So this is a large river with a lot of energy and the ability to transport quite a this, bit of this material uh, over time. Footing's a little trickier than I had planned, so we're going a little bit slower here. Get our way up here to this first little section of this cut. All right, so up against this cut here um, and as we can see this is a mixture of a lot of different size sediments um, from <coughs> excuse me you know golf ball size rocks a lot of sand more fine grain material in here and then in places there's much larger particles uh, up here. So we actually have quite a bit of layering in here. And then down here you can see some bigger material too. Um, but you can see a crude layer coming across here that divides out these different layers of different sizes of sediment. So we've got these large cobbles and gravels here near the bottom. And then looks like a layer of more sandy dominantly sandy material and then above that uh, up as far as I can see mostly cobbles and gravels um, so we can learn a couple things about some sedimentary processes looking here so the size of the sediment is always going to tell us a little bit about the energy <clears throat> of the environment in which this material was deposited and so the larger the material the more energy it takes to transport that material now you know, if we were in any sort of other setting or looking at ancient rocks where the depositional environment is not readily known, um, we'd have to 
kind of work our way through this detective style. But in this case, things are a little bit easier. These rocks are, um, you know, poorly consolidated. It's, it's very young sediments. And we can look down out at the river and see the actual um, depositional agent that deposited this material. So what we can infer then is that we've got past events, flooding events along this river that are transporting particles of different sizes depending on the level of flow. When we have very energetic events, we're gonna be able to transport these larger um, fist size and larger rocks down the river system. Other times where it might be a little bit less energetic, we would be depositing the smaller material, the sand size material. So let's head up here a little closer and I think there's some interesting sedimentary features we can look at as well. Um, so one thing you can always do when you're looking at anything, any sort of sedimentary unit where particles have been deposited, is you can look at the class that are carried, right? You can look at the actual particles themselves and see what they tell you about the source region of that system, where these rocks are coming from. And we can see in here, we have a lot of very well-rounded rocks that have small crystals. Um, these are intrusive igneous rocks, mainly granitic type rocks for the most part. There are embedded in here in places, some darker rocks. These look like uh, basalts to me. And so there's a couple different rock types in here. And these of course would be indicative of where this river you know, what this river travels through as it's transporting the sediment and moving uh, down gradient. Um, trying to pick which way I want to go. We can see some more of the layering up here, these kind of light colored layers of sediment. I think we'll head back around this corner a little bit. This slope is just massively unstable. Um, the other thing we can see here a little bit is you can get out, pick out some little wispy lines running through the outcrop here. These are cross beds. So we have periods of time when the sand's being deposited. It's being deposited in layers, <clears throat> but not horizontal layers, layers that represent um, the topography of the stream channel. And so you get a little bit of a, a slope there on those, but we can see some of the sizes here. The other thing you might see sometimes in these more cobble and gravel rich layers is sometimes you see, and I'm not quite seeing it here, but sometimes you'll see uh, <clears throat> all the cobbles oriented in the downstream direction. So a lot of times they'll lay out or be arranged almost like dominoes, kind of leaning in one direction. Uh, and that's called imbrication. So whenever you see that, that helps you figure out a little bit about um, which direction the current was moving. Like for example, here's, here's a nice one right here. This particle right here has uh, the orientation I would expect from imbrication. You can see it crudely here. Uh, this one's oriented similarly, this one. But a lot of these particles are close to spherical and, and very rounded. Uh, in their shape, three-dimensional spheres. And so you wouldn't see that unless they had more of a, an elongate uh, shape to them like this one does here. But there is some crude imbrication for sure coming through some of these. Uh, a lot of it again is the, the granitic uh, material. And then it looks like there's a, an abrupt change in energy level as we come down just a little bit we can see sharp contact here where the energy level changes from the sand and a little bit of gravel in there to the bigger cobbles here so you can see uh, the river <clears throat> energy level change you know flood some event that caused it to be able to carry larger size material over that interval of time let's go down a little bit further here i think i'm in a little patch here that's got a little bit easier walking And a little lens right here, we have a, a small lens of the cobbles right through the middle of this coarse sand. And so again, another higher energy event. Uh, there's a nice cobble here that's been actually cut and sheared right through. 
So kind of a neat and different look at things. You know, we often look at, uh, you know, solid rocks, but I think you can also learn quite a bit about processes and uh, how things work by looking at these sedimentary outcrops as well. You know, and this thing is potentially on its way to becoming solid rock. I mean, I can still pull the cobbles out of here so it's not consolidated, but it's not too far-fetched to think about how, you know, given a little bit more time, uh, compaction, and allowing groundwater or water to move through this outcrop, cementing these particles together, this would at some point in the future possibly be uh, a conglomerate sandstone mixture, right? These sands will turn to sandstone and these gravel rich layers then would be called uh, a conglomerate. You can also see right here, hopefully this turns out well enough, I can't back up any further. Notice that this sand layer here pinches out as you move to the right. And so that's sort of a, a lens of sand. Um, and you think about streams and how they operate, you have the bottom of the bed of the stream, the channel, that's possibly moving or usually moving the largest size particles. But then along the, the margins of the stream, the flow and the velocity of the water is a little bit lower. So it's not able to move those very large particles and it might only be moving the sand size particles. And so you get some geometries in here where you know areas where it's depositing sand areas of gravel um, and there often is these these lens shapes that we see kind of through here maybe when we get back down to the road we can look back up at the the cut and see uh, some of those shapes uh, and some of those geometries in the exposure here so uh, I'll try to go a little bit further <clears throat> footing again is a little a little nasty, but not too bad. Let's see if we see anything else as we head to this last little uh, sort of steep slope over here. A couple more steps. There we go. Yeah, so there's the other, another part of this sandstone or sand lens kind of pinches out a bit this way and then it looks like we get a lot of <laughs> the cobbles and such so pretty amazing uh, hopefully this was helpful though just a different way to look at another road cut and look at a different type of road cut um, so road cuts don't have to be solid rock you can stop and look at these unconsolidated loose outcrops and and learn a few things as well so hopefully that was helpful uh, thanks again for joining me on this edition of Random Road Cuts. Appreciate your support of the channel. Hopefully you enjoy these geology education videos I put together. And we'll see you again on the next road cut. But we'll sign off now from the lovely Boise River here. Flowing along Highway 21 in southwest Idaho.